It's me, Excanada Dentist. I'm just gonna cut right to the chase. I got Hallie! I was not expecting to get her yet because I was in Phoenix, Arizona for a week um, for a science conference. You guys can see a travel vlog of that. It's the last video I posted. And I looked because she was in stock there and she wasn't showing up. So I just cut my losses and left. And then when I got home, she was in stock at Walmart. <laughs> I'm so excited. This, ha this is such an incredible line and we're gonna get all up in here. I'm gonna discuss the price change and what I think is going on. I'm gonna discuss the other characters and who I think my favorite is. We're gonna talk all about it. And if you guys wanna see my initial reactions to all of these characters and all of their accessories, um, I have a video from back when the first image of them released and you can see how I feel. I'm so excited, so we're just gonna get right into it. Here is Hallie in her packaging, and the packaging is remarkably different. It's actually a lot smaller than the regular packaging, and um, I'll post my little doll hunt clip after this. I wasn't expecting to find her, so I didn't film a full doll hunt. I'm sorry about that. And you'll know as soon as you spot the doll. Like, it, she was like a beacon on the shelf. I was like, oh, Hallie! And look how beautiful she is presented in this box. It is quite a smaller box, but the price has gone up. She was $35 with tax in the state of New York, so depending on that tax rate. And right there it says, meet the students of Pacific Coast High, the most elite fine arts high school on the West Coast. Here are the, here are the days are sunny, the classes are poolside, and the drama rolls in and out like the tides. And this is apparently going to be a spinoff if the source of that information was correct. So that's kind of exciting that we're getting another Rainbow High show already. And it says, Hallie, fashion design focus. Alrighty, now that we've looked at her box, I'm just gonna unbox her now and I'm really excited about it. But first, here's the little doll hunt It's clip. on the end cap, huh? But I want three. There you go. Yeah, I do. I wouldn't open them though. Do you think they have them? <gasps> Bet they do! Oh no, but she has a messed up eyebrow. Are you kidding me? It's really messed up. Or it's like thin on your nose. Look at the. Oh the no! Should I ask? Are they, are they the right size or are they different? Yeah, no! <laughs> Why? But they had her. There's an employee. Hold on. Y'all, I gave up because he said there was only one in stock. I, I asked an employee, but look. And she's perfect. They had another one. No, he said there was only one, so I didn't bother looking. And then I just happened to walk this way to find you. And she is perfect. Yes. I don't know. It seems like maybe, the yeah, they go here. It says P Coast Tally. For some reason, I thought it would be exciting to include a clip of me unboxing her, but the clip is really overexposed, but this is how I unbox my Rainbow High dolls, so yeah. Hi friends! So here is Hallie out of the box, and she looks so beautiful. I am absolutely in love with this face mold. Uh, unboxing her was a bit lackluster compared to usual because they come with so few accessories. Um, she came with this towel, which is huge and beautiful. They come with an extra pair of legs and sunglasses and then of course the stand and comb that all of the characters come with i have to say that i'm a bit i at first i was defending the price because to me rainbow high dolls are worth oh and she comes with a purse to me rainbow high dolls are worth a premium like i felt like 25 was actually kind of cheap for them not that i didn't enjoy paying that don't get me wrong because I, I mainly buy my doll not mainly but i buy like a lot of my dolls on clearance or secondhand because with Rainbow High specifically because they are very expensive. And then also most of my doll collection is secondhand. I don't like to spend over $20 on a doll. So these dolls are creeping up in price a little bit and that is worrying to me. We'll discuss a lot more about that later. Uh, but I was kind of, at first I was defending them, but when I was unboxing her, I was like, oh, this is a lot less than usual. And one thing I will say is that I really appreciate the thought that the company had by giving us the extra pair of legs because Every other doll has had healed feet so far, so this is great for changing the outfits, but you should at least have this doll come with heels so that it actually makes sense, because right now she just comes with this, like, imagine if you, like, didn't read the instructions, or even if you did, it's just kind of like, why does she come with this? Little weird, if they had included even a partial second outfit, like, maybe a swim cover-up shirt and some heels to wear to class, I'm not saying you should, like, or heels are more realistic for class, but personally I'm not a big fan of flip-flops, so... It's better than flip-flops for class. Um, she's really, really beautiful, you guys. Look at that face. And I really like the eye color. It's, it's well, it's still blue. 
Can we please have one line without like 90% blue eyed dolls? That'd be great. I'm not sure how many of the dolls in this line have blue eyes, but I'd venture to guess it's over 50%. Um, but they are beautiful eyes and they have a lot of green in them. They're coming off more blue on camera than they look in person. In person, they look a lot more green, but they definitely are blue with green inside. Um, and her hair is so, so nice. I really like the hairstyle they gave her, although it's gelled, but not very much. It reminds me of Cheer Jade's hairstyle, just with a lot less gel. She has a fabric visor, which is really, really nice. And I do think that the budget for these dolls is probably comparable to the Series 1 dolls specifically, maybe Series 2 as well. Series 3, absolutely not. But what I'm getting at is they come with a purse and then a bunch of accessories like the hat and the scrunchie. This purse is not the best. It's really, really cute. I like it a lot. But if you're going by how much the cost to produce it was, I'm not sure about that. But it's very, very cute. And I'm excited to get extra accessories like purses. I'm just worried that everybody was begging for purses so much that now we're not going to get a second outfit anymore. <laughs> Which I hope that's just for Pacific Coast. And I hope that it's just something to do with the cost to produce all these ex these specific extras that they come with. I'm not sure. It is worrying. Um, but again, we're going to get into that later. And I really, really love the towel. It's huge. It's just like a real beach towel. Most dolls that, like, even beach dolls that come with towels come with one that's literally this big compared to the doll. And what am I supposed to do with that? You could dry your nose with that. <laughs> She's so, so pretty. And I really love her swimsuit, too. I think it's really, really nice, well-designed. It's not lazy. The shoes are really cute as well. It's very novel to see a doll with flat feet and, like, sandals on. So it's really interesting. And I like it for that reason. I think it's really cute and I think they're going to go really well with a lot of outfits too. All right, so now I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to talk about her up close. Next, we're going to take a more detailed look at just Hallie and gosh, she's so, so pretty. And let me lift the visor so that you guys can see her actual hairline. Her hair seems extremely densely rooted. I will take it out of the ponytail at the end of this video so I can show you what the rooting looks like. It's just that that, that is so much hair in that ponytail. So I, I have full faith that that is a full head of hair. And her hair is really, really beautiful. It has several different colors in it, but the main color is this kind of, it's almost a teal color which I'm a big fan of, because as you guys know, I've been really wanting a teal rainbow high doll. And so far, I think this is the closest we're going to get. And she looks beautiful. I think um, every piece of her design is so cohesive and really, really well done. I think this doll is going to be hard to beat, but I have full faith that the next Pacific Coast doll is going to completely knock my socks off just like this one. Her hair is in a high wrapped ponytail that is curled with just one big old curl. Imagine how difficult that would be to achieve in real life, like getting all your hair to curl in one big thing. She has this really nice little scrunchie on her head as well. Oh, it has a design. Uh, it's like a the chain design that I think is um, Versace, but I honestly have no idea. So if you correct me, just be civil about it. <laughs> her face is definitely like the standout piece of this doll. She's just beautiful. Her makeup's done a little bit differently this time. So she has this brown darker circle that's a bit offset. And then there's a clear outer circle. It might not be clear. It might just be a lighter brown. But if you look, it it looks much better than just giving that weird line up to the eyebrows. So I really appreciate it. And it does make it pretty easy to see if you have a misplaced doll as well, which I appreciate a lot because sometimes you bring home a misplaced doll and don't realize it. And then you don't really like that doll very much. So um, I appreciate when it's easy to tell. She also has lip liner on. So she has a lighter lip with a more magenta lip liner. And I personally think the lip liner is very, very pretty on the Rainbow High dolls. I think... All of the dolls that have had lip liner so far ended up being some of my favorites, so I'm completely on board with the lip liner. She ha So her visor is super interesting too. It actually wraps around her head similar to how you would wrap like a bandana or a hair wrap or something, so it's kind of interesting. And it's made out of a very plasticky satin material and it has these palm fronds on it. It's very pretty and I'm ex I'll be taking it off later when, we when I take her hair down, so we'll get to see that in full effect. And the top just says rainbow on the brim, and then the actual band is just that palm frond fabric. I think it's very pretty, although it's much more blue than the swimsuit is. If you look at the swimsuit, it has more teal in there. So if you compare these fabrics, you see how like different the color story is there? It's kind of interesting. Her swimsuit is really cool, and the thing that I'm the most surprised by with it is that they added this hardware to it, because I just feel that they really didn't have to, but... When I say they didn't have to, what I mean is I'm really, really glad that they did because I love it. I think it looks fantastic. So she has a halter swimsuit that has like a bandeau fit to it. And then she has these swim shorts on, which are super detailed and impressive. Like these are a really fantastic piece. 
Uh, although they're not much of a fashion piece unless you're doing beach fashion, but I, I think they're beautiful. I always wear swim shorts like this and um, I really like them. So I'm really happy about her having such nice ones. And then she has bikini bottoms underneath that we're going to look at later. And they actually have hardware on them too. They have an R on one side and an H on the other. You could cut the R off and just have this be Hallie. <laughs> Um, and let me look at the top in closer detail with you guys. And the back is secured with Velcro. It's this weird piece of... Secured with Velcro, and mine has a bit of extra little ties from packaging. And there's the halter. And then these shorts are fit with just elastic, which is another really high quality detail that MGA keeps doing with Rainbow High and it's really impressive. And luckily Rainbow High dolls don't have super vinyl like gummy legs, so it's really easy to put stuff on like this. And her shorts are just fantastic. Like look at all the stitch details and the different layers and this like netted piece and I'm just thoroughly impressed. Even the little, they would be like grommets in the actual piece, but you know, like they've just embroidered it to make it a little bit stronger and to look like hardware on the shorts. I'm really, really impressed by that. And they are tied to keep them a little tighter on her. And they're intentionally fitted lower waisted than her bikini so that you can see the bikini bottoms on there. I'm just really impressed. And the front of the two bows on the bikini, not on the shorts, have these on them. And they've kind of helped, they've kind of guided them out so that they can be part of this outfit as well, which I think is so, so cute. And we're gonna look at the bikini in just a moment. First, I wanted to show her shoes. And her stand, by the way, is a very different color than, this is Crystal's, hold on. This is Crystal's stand, like bottom, but this is Skylar's stand and look how different the color is. So this is Skylar's stand pole and this is Hallie's stand. So you can see how different they are. This is just Crystal's bottom stand thing. When I used to display them, I would arrange them in a very specific way. So the stands are different. And this is what the flat foot looks like. I'm really excited about the realms of possibility this opens up, if this isn't just a one-time thing. I hope it's not. I know it's kind of weird to come with the extra legs, but having this option just really expands what your dolls can wear and the different poses you can do. So I'm fully on board for this. And I'll, I'll discuss this a little later, but I think that ankle articulation is honestly ugly. So I'm really excited about this, actually. I know it's kind of a weird choice, but I think it was a very intentional choice, and I'll explain why I feel that way. And her shoes are very, very nice. They have a girl with pigtails on them, and it just says Rainbow High on the ribbons. And they're basically just little slides, and they're overall pretty undetailed, but the painted detail on them and the fact that they're just uh, slides, really... Um, really helps sell the pieces. I think they're beautiful and they look very realistic, something someone would actually wear to the beach. Um, if you've ever tried wearing heels on the beach, because I have for costume pictures, it's it's rough out here. It is rough. Alrighty, so let's move back up to her beautiful face. And next I'm going to be taking her hair down and also getting the bikini bottoms out to show you. Here she is with her hair down. I know it's looking not great and I would have preferred to leave it in the ponytail, but I want to be able to show you guys how densely rooted her hair is, or at least mine is, so that you guys can get an idea. I also put her sunglasses on her, which are the most precious accessory. I'm normally not a big sunglasses on dolls fan, but mainly because like every single doll ever comes with them. But with Rainbow High, we haven't been seeing them. So when we actually do see them, it's a real treat and they're very well designed as well. A lot of times doll sunglasses are just one piece of colored vinyl. It's very boring and lazy and these are really, really nice. All the painted detail in them. And I especially like this very subtle R pattern on there. It looks really, really good. And then her hair is the next thing we're going to be looking at. And it's so densely rooted. I'm actually shocked. Look at all this hair. I was I was expecting it to be a little bit sparse because she doesn't have a part line and her hair is meant to be in a high ponytail. But no, her hair is probably the most densely rooted rainbow high doll that I have now. It's a lot. If anyone wants to reroot this doll, I recommend not doing it because, oh my god, there's so much hair on this head. Oh my goodness. That's why that ponytail is so thick and heavy. Wow. I was really, really impressed by that. And then, I'm sorry her hair looks a little crazy, but we're going to move down so that we can see her bikini bottoms. And expectedly, they're very similar to the top. And it's possible because this is patterned fabric that each of these bikinis is going to look a little bit different, which is kind of exciting. So... As you can see, the top part is very teal, like it has a lot of that greener color inside, but my bottoms don't have as much, so it's quite interesting. And then if we look at the back, these are also an elastic piece, so they just slide on and off the doll, which again is really impressive. My doll has a few paint or 
Okay, that one scratched off, but my doll has a paint defect here. If you can see it, it's very subtle, so I don't mind, but it's from when they were painting the nails, I bet, which begs the question of when they paint the nails, do they do it when the doll is done? Because it's kind of, I don't know, maybe that's just a coincidence where it is. And her nails are painted a kind of aquamarine color. It's very, very pretty. And then if we set her back a little bit, I wanted to show you a couple of her extra accessories before we do the comparison. This is what the visor looks like. So these are actually just an extra piece and it Velcros, which is really nice. It makes it a lot easier. I'm not going to put it on right now because her hair is like that. Um, and then her bag. I recommend leaving this in. It's a little plastic thing that keeps it open. But if you're like actively playing with it and stuff, you don't really need to do that. But you know, it keeps the shape really nicely. And when you're displaying it, it makes it look a lot nicer as well. So it says rainbow on it. It has these really cute chain straps. And I really like the little sh shoulder protectors. And then the handles are kind of a jelly plastic. It's really, it's a nice piece, but I know that this material is quite cheap. So this is not like the most expensive piece or anything, but that's like the style they were going for. So I'm not too offended by it. And I think it's a really, really, really nice piece. And I'm excited to add it to my collection. And now we're getting rainbow high purses, which again, in most doll lines, I'm so sick of purses because they're always lazy plastic, usually like gummy plastic in one piece. They're very rarely fabric or even like an interesting plastic. So I'm really excited that rainbow high is introducing so many bags with Pacific Coast and they're all really, really nice. And then this is what her scrunchie looks like. When you stretch it out and you can see the actual fabric on there. And then I'll show you the shorts and she has a lot of cool accessories, and her towel is probably my favorite of the extra accessories, if I'm being honest, just because I'm so used to mediocrity with doll towels, and this is so huge and nice. And then the back is white, and it's really made out of towel material. You could totally dry your doll's hair with this. Um, but this is going to be so fun for kids to bring to the beach, and me, Brooke, to bring to the beach and take pictures. Like, this is really, really cool. And for displays, it's going to be fantastic. And again, this thing is huge. Like... It really is the size of the doll, which is seriously impressive. And now I'm a little worried to do this part, but I'm going to be switching her legs out, which I have a little guide on, so. And I took off one leg to test, but you, you just pull. That's all you have to do. Yeah, pretty easy. And then you just pop the new ones back on. This is that. The picky toes on Rainbow High Dolls are kind of look like big toes sometimes so that was a little confusing for me but we got it um oh, what <laughs> oh well you can tell actually because it'll say r inside that's actually really nice okay do you just push pull off the bottom part of the doll's legs insert the second pair of legs it just says push them on okay it is a very robust joint so i'm not worried about it breaking i think it's actually in Oh no, there. Okay, so there's a snap when you get it in there. So there it is. And then let's get this one. Oh, that one was much easier. Okay. I was just being a little bit too uh, careful. And there we go. Not too hard. I am <laughs> kind of curious to see how these dolls look when they start showing up secondhand. Uh, will they have legs? They are remarkably difficult to take off. And, but uh, with Monster High, like, it's very hard to find them secondhand with, like, both of their hands and their arms and stuff, so we'll see. I am excited for the jewelry potential that we might see. Like, can we get some anklets or something? It might be interesting, but I doubt they're going to do that, but it would be cool. All right, now we're going to be doing the comparison. I'm going to make Hallie just a little bit more presentable first, though. I wanted to compare her really fast to Skylar because the most common comment I've been seeing ever since this doll revealed is that she's just Skylar with a new face mold. Those comments confuse me a bit because... It's another doll with blue hair, yes, and they have, I guess, a similar skin tone if you, like, aren't looking, sure, but there's nothing similar about them. They don't even have the same color scheme. She's in the blue family, but this is more of a teal color scheme with some blue accents, while Skylar is just all blue, and it's a little weird to me that any doll with a skin tone that isn't pale white is going to be scrutinized and compared to another doll and we've been seeing this with Kaya and Carmen and Marissa and Harper it's a little bit weird and I hope that it stops Rainbow High even if it does start getting competitive they're still different characters and even if it was Skylar with a different face mold isn't that a good thing everybody's been saying they want series one with different face molds but I'm just here to say that she isn't even remotely similar looking to Skylar and it's very disappointing that even with that really good picture that MGA released of Pacific Coast people were still saying that 
Her skin tone is so different, by the way. Skylar has very red-toned skin. While Harper has, like, I don't know how to name tones, to be honest, but, like, physically that looks redder. Um, but you can see how different these skin tones are, and I'll zoom the camera in a little bit. So please stop saying that this is a Skylar clone, because you're looking a little weird, and you're looking a little suspicious, and you're looking a little silly. And that's all I have to say on that matter, so I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Really quickly, I wanted to show you the hair colors as well. So she has a kind of teal color with a little bit of blue mixed in, while Skylar has this one stripe of kind of a teal blue, which I always thought was kind of weird on Skylar because it actually throws off some of her color schemes to have this teal inside. So they've actually kind of worked on having less teal in the newer dolls i found, but if you see that teal, it is the same that they use here. If not the same, then very, very similar. But it's one streak in Skylar's hair, and personally, like, this this doll's so much greener. I just noticed there's a little green dot on her hair. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that off. So on. that's the end of this video, so now I'm gonna discuss a couple of things. First thing I want to get to is articulated ankles. People are concerned as to why she doesn't have articulated ankles. They think that this is weird and superfluous. And I agree that this is weird and superfluous, especially on the surface. And to kids and parents, I think this is gonna be very weird. But as a doll person, I'm not the biggest fan of articulated ankles. I don't mind when they're included, but personally, that's a really fragile area to have a joint, especially because shoes like in Rainbow High, those boots that you put on Amaya, those are so difficult to remove. Imagine with a joint there too, how difficult that would be. And I know people have been saying like, oh, well, River has one. River's ankle is so that you can take his pants off because having flat feet makes it extremely difficult to remove jeans. Um, and then if I can grab Jet for a moment. Ooh, Vanessa tried to fall. Jet does have articulated ankles, and I can show you guys why I think they did not do it. So, as you can see, her articulated ankles are only kind of a rotational joint. You can get a little bit of point out of them, but it's not much. I do think it's cute in some shoes, and it's pretty fun to have, so I don't personally mind it, and I think this is a cute joint. But if you're trying to use flat shoes, that joint is going to do nothing unless you have an interchangeable foot. An interchangeable foot would also be weird, and I think that would be very breakable and make Imagine that thing gets stuck in the boots. That's the thing that I'm mainly concerned about is that it's totally gonna get stuck in boots if it was a removable foot. This is the issue with having flat feet that like Barbie always has, or sorry, with um, having flat shoes on pointed feet. Even if you articulated this, it would look strange because the arch of the foot is, you know, to wear a heel. And Jet wouldn't be able to compensate for that even if she could put, move her foot in that way. And they would have had to create a new joint, which I would have been all for them creating a new joint, like all the power to them. The doll costs more, might as well work on something with her to make her worth that extra price. But I hope you understand what I mean. And I understand completely if you would have, if you still are just like, you know, I just would have absolutely preferred having an articulated ankle. I just think logistically, because of how tight some of the shoes are, I don't think it would have worked just because I think it's too breakable. And then also, it still wouldn't have fixed this issue. The best thing that they could have done, maybe, was put a actual foot joint right here. But even then, very breakable. It would look weird. I think this was a really good solution. It is cumbersome and strange, but once you've... Most people don't change their doll's outfits every day, so this is weird, but it's not, like... It's not too out of the out of the realm of possibility. And then, also, like, Rainbow Hire intended for a higher age demographic, so I don't think, like... I know five-year-olds are definitely getting these dolls, but I don't, I don't know if they're going to be, like, horrified by this. Maybe, though. The second thing is the price, and that's the thing that I don't really have an explanation for. I do know cost of production is increasing. There's been shipping issues. Maybe MGA is trying to recuperate some kind of lost revenue because there's a ton of dolls from Series 3, maybe even Series 1 and 2, and Slumber Party and Rockers that are stuck on these shipping pallets and they can't sell those dolls until they hit stores and I have a feeling once they hit stores they're gonna the stores are gonna be inundated with them so those dolls are gonna go on harsh clearances so if you're waiting on some rainbow high dolls wait a little bit longer because I'm very very confident there's going to be some huge discounts coming up and rainbow high dolls generally don't sell out like ever um until they decide to stop producing them overall MGA like continues producing them which I think is really nice actually because with monster high it was a fight for your life to get some of those dolls they have added extra accessories, which I do like. Like, I like the sunglasses and the scrunchie and the hat and the bag. Like, they are a lot of nice extra pieces. And the the towel is amazing. I cannot, I cannot fully state how excited I am about this. Just because, um, you know, I've been a doll collector for a long time. And I 
I did play with my dolls a lot more when I was a tween, when I was like first getting into dolls and I played with them a lot. And it always really frustrated me how dolls never come with like accurate linens or linens that make sense. And Rainbow High really, really steps it up in the realism aspect when they come with accessories. I think 35, I think 35 personally, if series one had come out at $35, I still would have thought that was a good deal. For me, compared to just my experience with dolls and just how I how I value different aspects of dolls, I truly believe that the Rainbow High dolls in series one could have been $40 and still would have done super, super well. They would have been so much less accessible and I don't want them to be more expensive, but I think if you watch some of my first Rainbow High videos, I will literally say like, I don't understand how these things are $25 because they're such high quality and they're really, really impressive. And MGA is really good at giving us that. And they, I think they get a much lower profit margin, but they're able to deliver a way, way nicer product than a lot of other companies. And I appreciate that a ton. I'm worried that we're seeing the price go up and we're not visibly seeing where the extra budget is going. I'm fairly confident that these dolls did cost more to produce in some aspect. I'm not sure what that aspect is. Maybe printing on towels might be expensive, but I don't think that's true. But this is like a hefty piece. I could see this costing a little bit more, but I can't see these accessories costing as much as an entire second outfit with shoes. Um, also a lot of dolls recently have been coming with jewelry pieces like I don't I'm not seeing it and I think it's important that the consumers especially the consumers that aren't doll collectors MGA knows they have the doll collectors the doll collectors will buy them regardless generally the doll collectors want to buy them all and the doll collectors tend to be um, they go hard for the company and that's not a great thing at, from like a I don't know what point of view to call it but from an outside point of view nobody should ever be simping for a company it's not great and it causes a lot of exploitation of the consumer base and stuff but you know it's something that just happens in dog collecting and i'm guilty of doing it i'll buy anything rainbow high points out puts out i'm in love with them i really they make me really really happy and i think there's a healthy balance people can absolutely say what they're upset about with these dolls and other people can say i don't mind i really like those dolls and i don't think either of those people should be villainized i just it's a $10 or I guess more like a $7 price premium compared to series three. And it's hard to see where it went. If it is somewhere on this doll and I'm just not seeing it, that makes me really happy. And the, the outfit and all of the pieces she comes with are very high quality. And I really don't want it to seem like they're not because they really are. But the prices are going up, up, up. There's six dolls in series or in Pacific Coast that's a lot of money because the six dolls before would be 25-ish dollars each. So you'd be looking at 150 to $200 depending on taxes and the gas you had to use to drive to the store and stuff. So you could get the full lineup for $200. Whereas with these, you can get three dolls for $110. So that's like $200, $220 for the line. And that's not considering tax. That's not considering several other things. So it's a little bit alarming and it's going to be a lot less accessible. I do think that a lot of doll collectors don't consider that MGA never expects everybody to buy every single doll. That's more of a thing that's exclusive to collectors because the reason they put out so many dolls is because maybe people think these two dolls are ugly and aren't fans, but they'll see this one and this will be the one that gets them. Or some kid is super not interested in like any doll except the blue ones. So the more blue ones they put out, the more they're going to make. That's kind of what they're doing. They're not making Pacific Coast so that everybody runs out and buys all of Pacific Coast at once. They're not expecting that at all. Uh, and that's something doll collectors will say. They'll be like, oh, well, how do they expect parents to buy all this stuff right now? And I'm like, that's not what they're, ex they're, they're not expecting that at all. They're, from the doll designers that I've spoken to about things like this, the idea is just to, like, in the two second interaction of looking at the shelf they just want to grab your attention so the more variety and the more different boxes and the more different poses and different things you can do with the doll on the shelf or the different price points the better so that's kind of what they're doing i think mga does go for the angle of being like the more deluxe and like fancy doll but i'm worried that they're jumping the gun a little bit the 50 dollars slumber party dolls and rocker dolls are actually flying off the shelves which is truly shocking to me I know doll collecting is kind of in vogue right now, so a lot of people are doing it, and maybe that's partly the reason, but I also think that they are very popular with kids, which is great, but they're just really expensive. They're getting really, really expensive. I couldn't see that extra value in the rocker dolls. I can see it actually in the slumber party dolls. I do feel that the slumber party dolls and Vanessa, let me make it clear, and Vanessa, 
are worth the $50 price point. But with the other two Slumber Party dolls, I can see a higher price point, but the $35, i am a little questioning. But those dolls did come with two, ex two outfits, a ton of extra accessories on the actual dolls, and they came with, like, some extra things. So, like, the Slumber Party dolls, personally, I think that their piece has more inherent value not necessarily play value but i feel like it costed more to make those um slumber bags sleeping bags oh my gosh i forgot the word um whereas the rocker dolls pieces are big plastic pieces that are often very fragmentary from what the instrument is actually supposed to look like and even though vanessa's drum set is my least favorite piece i think vanessa really steps it up with her hair and her outfit pieces were all really really impressive i was thoroughly impressed by vanessa if if MGA continues with this higher price point, which they better not go any further past 35, I think they're I think they're gonna lose a lot of steam if they go past this 35 benchmark. Uh, oh, actually, weren't the winter break dolls $35? Winter okay, I, I can't see where the I can't see where the cost is going. I do think these dolls are absolutely beautiful and it's nothing negative against the dolls themselves, and I really like all the extra accessories and I'm happy to see them. But I feel like at the $25 price point this would have worked right but i'm not i'm not at the company i have no idea what's going on or what they're what part of the doll design they're trying to recuperate i have heard though from again talking to designers that the packaging is a big part of the budget because again like i said it's very important that people see the doll and are entranced by it and buy it that's what they're doing but again this box is smaller and it's the same design as before almost so where, where's the price going? If you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear it. Like, if you know of one of these materials being more expensive. I do know that swimsuit material is more expensive, but it's so little of it that I don't think that's where it is. The hair being very, very densely rooted is very nice, and I think that might be part of it. It's possible all these dolls have really good hair rooting, and I just love her face. This doll is so, so beautiful. If you guys are worried about the price point, trust that these will go on sale. I know they're coming out early in the year, so it'll be a while before we see a sale, but if this price is just not gonna work for you, which I completely understand, wait for a sale. These dolls are so expensive that I can't just buy them all at once like I normally do. I kind of have to wait a little bit because they, the, the price point going up a little bit means that I either have to work extra hours or I could just wait a little bit longer. Um, but they're not all hitting stores at once anyway. I do want to say, guys, only Phaedra and Hallie have actually been spotted on store shelves so far, to my knowledge, and the playset. I want that playset so bad. That playset actually seems like it's worth the money. I'm really excited about it. Um, only Hallie and Phaedra have been seen on store shelves, and they're having a very tricky time actually getting them on store shelves. So if you're having trouble finding them, don't worry about it. Just wait a little bit, um, especially after Christmas stores are having a really hard time like picking up the pieces and like making everything presentable again a lot of stores that i've seen are just like actively resetting and they do have the dolls in stock if you check on brickseek uh but they're they're not actually showing up anyway that's just a little bit of discussion i just wanted to i just wanted to talk about her a little more this is my first pacific coast doll that i'm unboxing and i thought you guys would mention this stuff in the comments anyway so i figured that it was worth mentioning i would love to know how you feel about hallie independent of the price discussion. Um, you can talk about the price discussion too, but I would really like to know what you actually think of the base doll herself. And if you were to fairly price her, where would you put her? I think if MGA truly did need to raise the price for whatever reason, maybe something in this truly did raise the production cost quite a bit. I think a 28 or 29 price point would be a lot more fair. I think 35 is really stepping over the line a little bit when winter break came with the winter gear. They came with wi like winter gear being like the skis. They also came with winter clothing, which is denser and more expensive. So they had layered, they had two layered outfits, two pairs of shoes. I'm just not seeing that much of a price difference in this doll. I can't see her costing the same as winter break. I'm gonna go because I'm kind of repeating myself. Thank you guys so so much for watching and I'd love to, I, I absolutely do want to know what you think of Hallie because I know she's been a little bit divisive. I think she's beautiful though. This if I had made my top 10 list while Hallie was in my house I would have been a lot more difficult because I would have been really wanting to put her on it. <laughs> Anyways thank you guys so so much for watching for this time. Bye! Oh, I'm done with my YouTube career. Can you please um can you please start doing the doll reviews? Like, I'll do the fun stuff and, like, accept the rewards, but I need you to make the videos. How's that sound? Yeah, that's Hallie. Hallie Capri from Pacific Coast. Got it? I'm counting on you. Like you didn't want to.